before we had a verse? 19. 19. 19. What say I then? That the idol is anything, uh -huh. or that which is offered in sacrifice to idols is anything. Right. But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils, uh -huh. and not to God. Ooh. I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. So he's telling us they, who they sacrifice it to. They're letting you know this is to this God. This is what we sacrifice him for. If somebody bids you to a feast and say, come on over, and they say, by the way, this is sacrifice to Baal. <laughs> and then your stomach wrong. Well, man, whatever, dog. What a silver one. Mm -hmm. No, you, you got at that point, they told you, this is to our God. Turn around and go out the door. Like what Daddy did. That's, That's right. right. That's right. right. Feast of the dead that brother kept moving. That's right. I'm hungry, but I can't. I can't eat. No, he was hungry. Let's eat. That's right. <laughs> Verse 21. Right. Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord, right. the cup of devils. Right. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. Right. Do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Right. Are we stronger than he? Right. All things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. Right. All things are lawful for me, but all things edify not. So what he said, expedient, he means, look, all things are lawful. Everything about the Genesis to Revelation is lost. But everything in expedient, some things are, you know, trying to figure this thing out. And it, it just, the knowledge of it just ain't came right in. It's going to come once I move from this personal aspect and why I really, you know, want to go over there to my parents' house on Christmas. Because I want to get that preach in front of all the company. I want to tear them down. If you got that in your mind, then it ain't coming to you to explain it like you should because you're looking to tear down. And understand this, if you got medicine, you go to the hospital, you read them the Psalms, you're not going in there to condemn. You don't go to the hospital, I don't care how bad, look at you. All them damn tubes running out of your nose and mouth. I told you, did Didn't I tell you what you're going to come to? Now read this script. Look at you now. You know, you can't go, if you got healing words, you're like, look. What happened to you is, is a result of whatever, how we're looking at it. We're looking to change our thought process and move in the right direction. That's healing medicine. So in like manner, when you're dealing with people that are doing these things, you got to look at them like they sit. Yeah. And I got to that. If it's anything other than that personal, it, it's the wrong thing to be doing. Go on over there. Stay at home. Don't go over there. Right. <laughs> Let's get some more. Where we at? Verse 24. Uh -huh. Let no man seek his own. Right. Every man another's will. Every man's another will. Everybody, when you're seeking another's will, you're saying, I would love to see you in the kingdom if we were blessed, brother man. Boy, if we got to match this we good. You're seeking his will, his right. riches, his glory. That's what we have to do. If, if it's anything other than that, you going over there for anything other than that. Yeah, ain't like the way she front me off. No, if she have to understand it from your vicious perspective, right. you ain't giving that medicine right. right. Vicious right. perspective. Let's get it. Vicious. Verse 25. Whatsoever is sold in the shambles that eat, asking no question. For conscience sake. See, the shambles is called the marketplace. Mm -hmm. So whatever sold there, don't, don't think about because you see Arabs in there in this shop, or you see Chinese in this shop. If it's a meat market, unless they tell you every slice of this cut of beef is given for this guy over there. They say, don't, don't go there. But you can't be worried about, no, I ain't going to go to see Lord Market, but I don't know if they slice their uh, meat right. But the Arabs, man, they run in the coast shop straight beef, but they Arab. Mm -hmm. so their, their, their blade is could have been blessed to Allah. Right. Because there ain't no pork going through it, don't mean the blade ain't defiled. You can't think like that. It's a meat market. Give me uh give me ten of them, First them, them, them goat steaks right there. And, and give me that over there. You get your meat, you go to the house. You can't be worried about what if a God just prayed over you gonna be hungry as hell. <laughs> Verse 26. For the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Hold it down, y'all. We got number two more, y'all. Let's get this last one. Verse 27. If any of them that believe not bid you to a feast, and ye be disposed to go. Hold it right there, man. Give me that word, disposed. See, if any of them that believe not, what are they not believing, y'all? 
So if they lead you to a feast, and they say you be disposed to go, and they say you have to go, the key word here is disposed. So as soon as we get an understanding of what disposed means, we clear it. I got another standard. 2309. 2309. Yes, sir. In the Greek chorus, uh -huh. it says thelo. And it means to determine, to determine, option, option, choose or prefer by implication to wish or to be inclined to. So we see that if you be disposed to go, if one bid you to a feast, and you want to go, you want to go, you want to go. The reason is consciously. Why do you want to go? Dad, he's celebrating Christmas, but uh, Bertha don't be there. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going. Slide in on them and slide back out. Murder. Yeah, it sounds weird. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but whatever the thought process is, and you think it over in your mind, conscience is already there. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. unbelief is there. Mm -hmm. They say, come on. So you you're not to it out. You have to weigh it out. Now, they're going to have them chitlins cooking. Look, and I know I ain't gonna be able to take that. <laughs> and then that one dude that will get drunk, always spilling drinks, and you know, but Bertha's gonna be there. <laughs> then I wait. Then I wait. Then he say, when you get there and find out Bertha missed the train, <laughs> and she's coming to next weekend, do you leave now? Or do you act like you came over there what you you know you came over there for? Now you're ready to think about conscious sake. All right, y'all, I'm gonna holler at y'all. And you just got here! Uh, Chillin's in there! Uh, <laughs> 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 this, is, this is why it's telling you it's all in your own hands. It's in your grasp. If you can't handle what's going on over there, don't go over there. But not because that is taking place is because they may attack you like you read this one Matthew, where they invited Christ to the same place and went to attack him, playing, you know, but Christ went, he said, yeah, I'm going to break them off good. If they have that plan, then the Holy Spirit will be with you. But no, I am going for this, to straighten this man out. Not that they got drinks over there. And when I get my feel of liquor, now I'm going to tell them about the day. Say anybody else. It's profane. <laughs> <laughs> and it, 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 you should be doing it, and you full of it, man. With the Bible, verse. Let me spoil this for Verse twenty-eight. Where we at? Verse twenty-eight. Okay. But if any man say unto you, you ain't twenty-seven. Yes. I read it over. Verse twenty-seven. If any of them that believe. Not bid you to a feast, and you be disposed to go. Uh -huh. Whatsoever is said before you, eat, ask and no question for conscience sake. See, and that's thinking, well, they lead me to a feast, and they got swine there, I'm supposed to eat that? No, you're supposed to look up the word dispose before you kept reading, because you don't know what the word means. How you keep reading past the key point in this? It's telling you, you know they're going to be chitlins there. You know that crazy uncle spilling drinks on everybody gonna be there. You still wanna go, but you still want to go. Why is it that you really want to go? To see who? Right, so y'all, and it's so what is said before you eat, but you please somebody that knows us being us, if you've been down this word and they steady, they trying to get out of that and, and you you can see it kind of they, they gonna tell you it ain't gonna be nothing defiled up in here. First of all, but still the conscience, you know, I'm not going to get into the spirit of that. I'm going to ask me something. I'm, I'm going to handle my business with this. But my peeps is over there. I ain't seen my grandmama. Yet. But if, if, some, if, if somebody's there and that looks like to them that you're using this as a cover to show up, you got to really deal with the conscience of that man and say, am I throwing a stumbling block in his way? You know, I tell my aunt to ship me that shirt again when she get back home. Because we still have to take care of the brethren that's right there that may not understand why you are there. If you take the tickets, and it's another young brother over there, and they see you down there in a brawl breakout because you won't stand up for the national anthem, and it's going to break out. You be a heathen, you better sit down. <laughs> you know that's next. You know that's next. <laughs> Don't let that warm Budweiser tell you what to do. <laughs> If you don't stand up, 
fucking coming down there. So y'all, once you understand that, you got to make a choice to be disposed if I'm a go, and that can take place. Like trip off there for you. Warm beer and crazy heat. There's no mix. So you don't understand what the question about that. That's the second you got time. Show up a little late. That's the second time I heard that's the second time I heard the word. If you told somebody and they offered you, you would pull this out. Eat. Eat was offered to But at the same, but at the same time, if it's your family's house or somewhere, and they know you don't eat such and and right. you know you don't eat such and such. Uh -huh. But they got it there for, for, for their own selves. Right. If, is it, is it still wrong to come? It's, it's wrong only if you, you go and you start telling them about what they're eating right, right. and it's already there. You got, you got a choice to call. Look, I you, 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 you going to cook them chilies you're going to do the same thing you did last time. You know I got sick of that. Well, baby, that's what it is. This is chilies and pepper here. <laughs> if you don't like it, don't come. And it, well, I'm going over there anywhere. Whatever the situation may be, don't go. It's telling you you have an out. You have an out. But when you go, you have to do it according to the law, whether you break them off or not. There's rules for being in another person's house. No matter what it's about. And we're going to read what Christ said. Let's read a little bit more this, y'all. We got two more to go, y'all. Go ahead. Verse 28. Uh -huh. But if any man say unto you. What? Hold it down, y'all. But if any man say unto you, right. this is offered in sacrifice unto what idols. Offered in what? Offered in sacrifice right. unto idols. Eat not for his sake that show him, and for conscience sake. For the earth is the Lord's, and the food is thereof. See, eat not for his conscience sake, because he's thinking. No, he said he is right. But I guarantee you, when we smell these pork chops smothered in that beef gravy, because he's thinking. Christmas pump, he ain't gonna be able to tell the difference. <laughs> if that's on his conscience, say he set you up like that, and say eat not, but he already told you. This is to my gods. You know, this is to my gods. You can't now try to correct them and say, well, okay, let's put some better portions of meat in that. Let's take this out and then we'll sacrifice it to your God. You still can't do it. Either you go, it's the same thing what Christ told us about the Pharisees. Whatever they say, be it and observe it. If they because they coming out of the Bible, but don't do after they works. Listen to what they say. Because Satan likes to give you the truth first and then throw a curveball in there. If you block out the truth, you're gonna miss something. Because you're saying I'm focusing on if they say just be it and observe. Sit back. What they say? Where you reading that from? Matthew 32 and 5. Well, okay, let's go. Damn, he come on there. <laughs> You like, wait a minute, no, he up to no good. Then you judge the matter from that perspective. What you got, brother? Now you can always take some fish and double eggs yourself, can't you? And you can do what? You can always take some fish and double eggs. What we're eggs. talking about, if you're taking it to be partakers in that feast, and so it's a feast of customs or tradition of people. Feast is what's up, what, what it's all about. Right, it, it, that's what it is. If you put, then you are becoming a partaker. partaker. You're saying, I'm going to take what's good to me. To this feast, and I know it's defiled. Right. If that's what's in your conscience, so birth is it, right, right, yeah. right. You want to see birth? Is right, right. It could be birth could belong to Bobo, you know, but birth is just in time. Right. So, Let's get it. What's so up? my question. So you know, you say if the people don't know. So like, say for instance, I can say like if my mother-in-law invited me over for like Christmas dinner or something, and they think that this is really the birth of Christ, and I know that it's not. And so, like, if I bring my own food, because they have pork chops, and I have, like, a beef brisket or something, if they think that this is for Christ, then are they doing something? Like, am I? You in there. Because, yeah. well, see, well, you well, know well, you well, that they take to Christ. And you bring in food. You, they take. you, you, you into, their, into, their, into their space. And you said, I'm trying to make an unclean thing clean. Okay, but I'm bringing up. What we're talking about, they're being you to their feast. I understand that. Right. But if you eat on the But you said, like, we can't say, like, they worshiping the devil if they don't know it or something. But so you just, like, say, they still think they're going to tell you what this feast is about. Right. Look, now, down here, we're going to get down, get down with Bael. But I'm saying, like, if they say, like, 
we doing this through Christ. That's what I'm saying. So well, they, well, now, now at that point, they're telling you what it's for. They're telling you I'm misunderstood because right. that's what you're hearing. Right well, for one, you know, you know that's that's paper business. Ain't for Christ. That ain't in the Bible. If they tell you that you handle the business, you know, right then and there. So when you come, they expect full will to know what you Why believe. Is. They know what you believe because you've already told them that peace is not about Christ. But then, so if I told them that, and then they still think it is, and then I show up, am I saying... Well, the key is why are you showing up. Why? Because it says the spot. Right. You, 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 you determined to go. Why are you going if you're not already right to them? Right. You know that about Christ, and they still hold on to it. Right. 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 What are you even going for? We're going to keep doing what we're doing. That's what they said. They said, we're going to keep doing what we're doing, but you can go on. See, see, now they see, but because you said it's not right, they rejected knowledge. At this point, because you're saying, well, if I come, you know, I can't get down because of this and that. Those y'all cousin days, look, I choose not. See, the question is, they're busy. Hey, would you like to come to a feast? It's not, hey, your mama and auntie going to be here. You don't come over here. Don't worry about driving my car next week to work. If they got your handcuffs like that, then it's wrong. Again, anyway, you still have to make that choice and say, well, I guess I'm about to ride the bus next week then. Right. You can't be buffalo into anything. It's still free will. It's your choice. But the key is the school to go. If they tell you all of this and you still go over there, what is your mission, really? What's your mission? So if it was like to just see family, then you still don't go because you know that the big reason that they're there is to do something that's Hey. Well, hey. look, the deal oh, is, you know, time's going to be, what time y'all going to do? What time y'all going to do this? I'll be over there then. Once they get through all the singing and hollering and turn on the president, then you go over there then, right with y'all, go back home. Whatever you have to do, but the choice is so hard with going into that entity that has that thing. The same way when you walk in, in your ch in your job and you see Christmas trees and the greeters out there, when you walk in Snook and you walk past the bell ring. Change for the Salvation Army for Christmas gifts. Change. You walk right past. You walk right past. Right past. So in like manner, you gotta have that consciousness with your people. You can't separate your people from this. Or oh, it's personal. It's personal. I come to attack. I want me some get back. Let's do this last one, y'all. We're gonna close out. What we had on that? Last one, y'all. We're gonna close out. Oh, first twenty. Hold on. Where we at? Verse 29. Verse 29. Go ahead. Conscious, I say, not right. thine own, but of the other. See, conscious, think about the other person, what you're doing. I'm coming over here, and if they ask you the same question, we just ask you, that you don't think it may be a sharp Christian over there, of the, of the Christian, Christianity doctrine, and he run some things by you and had you backpedaling. You been the one breaking everybody off. Now you backpedaling at their feet. It's going to be your problem with them trying to listen to your doctrine from that point because your motives were to go over here and do this. Let's get smart. Even if you say, I just go over there and watch the game. We just told you the game's tied to the Roman gods. There's a line with that too. Every game are picked on Thursday, those are certain days that they worship the God and they offer up entertainment or sporting activity. The victory goes to that God. Y'all seen four ways? Yeah. When the winner, that's who it's to, it's to this God. So we have to understand we can't override, fellas, what we like. Does that mean we can't host a Super Bowl party? Can we? Hey, it's a fine line. You know, but this is what we're saying. Can we invite somebody to it? Can we keep this feast of this like this for that? We love football, yo. Satan already knows the game. He knows something you like. I'm going to mess with your conscience about it. <laughs> I'm going to be riding you like a cheap suit. <laughs> Let's get it. Where we at? Verse 29. Uh, conscience, I say, not thine own, but of the other. For why is my liberty judged of another man's conscience? Uh -huh. For if I by grace be a partaker, why am I evil spoken of for that which I give thanks? See, and this is still getting talking about to me. He said, look, I went to the marketplace. They didn't say this was sacrifice. I bring this meat home. I cook it. And I give thanks for this meat. I don't have to think about it because it came from Sular Mark. It was beef. It was cut for me. And they brought it home. And they said it wasn't sacrifice. I ain't got to think about that while I'm cooking. Right. Now, think about what conscience say is, though. We, we talk about somebody say, well, 
I ain't gonna eat up. Y'all cook swine on that grill? No, baby, we cleaned it for you. We cleaned that grill and burned it with fire and all your meat was cooked on that. Well, I don't care, cause swine been on it anyway, beforehand. And guess what you do? Belly rumbling on the way home, cause you showing out in front of them. Let me pull it to steak and shake. Give me a burger. And the person next to you, next, give me a burger and put some bacon by mine. And yours is cooking right there. Right next to sizzle, sizzle, sizzle. <laughs> <laughs> but you just told them a grill they clean for you. Clean. Put fire on and purified and said, look, we took out the time for you to do this. And you're still from, no, I don't need a swine been on that period. Well, swine is cooking on this one every day. And now you stand there. Right next to everybody said they don't have a cup. And you stand there like this, waiting to pay for it. <laughs> See, we can't play games like that, y'all. Unless you want to get you want to be a hundred percent uh uh clean of, of swine, cook and eat everything. I mean, everything you cook, grow, cook it yourself. And then that's the only way you know. Because there's beef sausage in a pork case. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, when you look at that, you can say, oh, I've been, damn, man. Okay, I can't get this brand no more. And you said that's a sacrifice to, you know, it, it's, they done mixed it up on me like this. So if you wanna, don't want to have to read every ingredient, get you a cow. Put it in your backyard. <laughs> but you probably can do that. So. And this is why Paul said don't trip off all the things because you got little snooks. Let me get that one last one. Luke 7, y'all. Let me finish that up. Finish that up, y'all. We'll get Luke 7 and we close tonight. Verse 31. Uh -huh. Whether therefore ye eat or drink, or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. See, whatever you do, eat or drink, whatever feast days you have, it has to be to the glory of God. And the reason I'm saying this is because Abraham threw a feast for wing. Is that anywhere in the scripture when, when a baby get off breast milk, we can throw a feast? No, sir. And we can invite other nations. Abraham did. Right. And invited kings from Hamite land. Three weeks. So it's not saying we can't have no feast days that you can't invite nobody over. Just do it according to what would please us take feast or off from or be, being married. It's a good time. But if it's going to be drama, it's going to be these problems, you can't do it, especially among your own brother. And please read 1 Corinthians 5. It goes into that, the last three verses of, of 1 Corinthians 5. It tells you, even if you hold a feast and you got an Israelite over there acting praise, turning over stuff, uh, they put, you see somebody put that pie up there to hold it for them. And then you go back and you laugh and then you. No, I mean, feasting is what it is. It's for merriment and laughter. Job 1. Each day, the brothers took a feast. Some say when that was birthday, and that's why they got attacked. They never said that. Job said, I'm going to pray for them that they didn't get out of control. When no drinking and no vanity words hop. Because when liquor hit the spirit, you will say some things that you don't say to your soul. You make promises that you can't keep. Let's get where we at. Finish that up. And this last one, y'all, is Luke. We're going to get out of here. Go ahead. Verse 32. Uh -huh. Give none offense, neither to the Jews nor to the Gentiles. Give none offense, y'all. We can't offend nobody just because we're breaking out. Offense is breaking off of two different things. You know. And especially you can't war with nobody that's basically you're looking for them for covering over your head. You got to get your own. There's nothing in the Bible tell you go up there and challenge it. You have to ask them. You, you, you have to. Those are the rules of somebody else's house. The script says you won't change the rules. Take over the house. <laughs> Find the strong man. Find the strong man. Time up. Uh, there won't be no tree put up in here this year, Mama. I'm sorry. But I'm going to feed y'all. And I'm, you know, I ain't going to use duct tape to keep you quiet. <laughs> Until <laughs> December the 26th. He's fine when he says give none offense. Give none offense. Give not offense. You don't want to offend nobody. It says you cannot offend in the world under no mm -hmm. circumstance. You cannot make nobody think, I never listened to your God behind what you said to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, no. What kind of God you serve? I don't understand that, but you did you. Go ahead, what you got, brother? That was a quote that hit me to the quote. What was that quote? Well, how my God he says, I was almost Come to the fence to become a Christian. Right. And then I met, then I met 
Oh. Oh. Right? Well, what he meant was uh, a study of Christianity. Mm -hmm. Right. See, because if he'd have met a follower of Christ, those words wouldn't escape him unless the devil was standing by with it. That's right. That's my word. Right. <laughs> no, but if you're speaking this and someone says those words, ooh, boy. Then it's not good. But what if you're correcting someone and they take offense to being corrected? That's why I asked you. The if they take, if they the take offense hurts. to being corrected, it's still called rejection of knowledge. We're not destroyed for lack of knowledge. We're destroyed because we reject it. If they are rejected, there's nothing you can do. And it's All you can do is shake your hands and your feet. But you to know it's, you've given it to them like, like you received it, and it's good to bring them to the doorway of salvation. If it ain't that purpose, if you ain't gave it like that, that rests with your conscience. We under Melchizedek, y'all. Y'all have to understand. The Most High is watching your intentions on how you try to correct somebody. <laughs> what is the intention of your heart? Huh? Yeah, it caught me down now in my life. He said, I won't get past the second grade. Well, guess what? I know the Bible better than her preaching. And I'm going to show them today. <laughs> No, if that's on your heart, no. neither to the Jews nor to the Gentiles uh -huh. nor to the church of God right. even as I please all men in all things not seeking mine own profit but the profit of many Did that they may that? be saved not all men but the profit of many so when you go over there all the company in there got to say if it's 20 of them in there maybe 13 I'm going to say this is my last one I've been, I've been wondering about that anyway I knew something went right all the way with that you know and that's what you got to be looking for. Gain that if your intent is anything other than that, then you are over there for the wrong reason. You want to get back. Let's get to what are your intentions. What are your intentions? Right. That's the main thing. Is it to be on for the kingdom? If it ain't gonna go. Let's get it. That's it. Luke chapter 7. The book of Luke. Chapter 7. 36. Y'all, we're gonna read this one. First Corinthians 5, we got a song for close. 61. Okay. And we out of here, y'all. Luke chapter 7, verse 36. We're going to read the last two verses of Corinthians 5. We're going to get the pearl on me up. Let's get it. The book of Luke. Uh -huh. 
chapter 7, yes sir, verse 36. And one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him. What is he doing? Did we just read 1 Corinthians 10? If one an unbeliever bid your feet, this is an unbeliever, he don't believe this is Messiah. He's bidding him to a feast. Let's read it. And he went into the Pharisee's house. What did he do? Went into the Pharisee's house. So y'all, y'all, y'all understanding this, so y'all don't think the Bible is contradicting itself. One of the Pharisees, the so-called church people say, uh, man, we have someone we're going to eat. Well, Christ is knowing already that the food is going to be lawful because they Pharisees. They law keep. There's going to be clean meat on the table. It ain't a pagan day either. It ain't a pagan day either. That's right. It's just a feast. Right. Go ahead. And he went to the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner. What was she? A woman uh, uh, in the what? A sinner. When she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment. So right here, this a woman of the street. Huh? We need to go into more detail. So she heard that Christ was there. All she had in her possession of working her work was an alabaster box of precious ointment. And she heard about Christ will be over there at, at, over here eating with them. You know, I'm uh -huh. going over there too. Let's get it. Verse 38. Uh -huh. And stood at his feet behind him, weeping, and began to wash his feet with turd, right? And did wipe them with the hairs of her head, and kissed his feet, and anointed them with the ointment. Uh -huh. Now the Pharisee, which had bidden him, saw it. He spake within himself, saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is that toucheth him. For she is a sinner. So right here, he's like, oh, he's supposed to be God. Uh, See, he's already been you to the feast, and he don't believe who you are. So his whole motive is a setup plan to see, because I don't believe you in Christ. Christ the greatest thought, you know. Christ the greatest thought. But he's saying, if you were Christ, you could read thoughts, and you would know who this woman really is. This is street walk. Let's get some more. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Simon, I have someone to say unto thee. And he said, Master, say on. See right here, he's like, look, I need to holler at you a second. I do. Oh, Master, say on. Go ahead. There was a certain predator which had two debtors. Right. The one off with 500 pence, the other 50. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him most. He gave one a stack with bands on and the other some pocket change. And he said, neither one of y'all owe me. Which one will be the happy? Verse 43, right? Simon answered and said, I suppose that he to whom he forgave most. And he said unto him, Thou was rightly judged. What has he done? Rightly judged. And the righteous judgment in her. That's what he told him. Hey, you just judge right. You just judge right. So he let them know, okay, we pray that you judge them right. Let's read them all. And he turned to the woman and said unto Simon, Seest thou this woman? I entered into thine house. Thou gavest me no water for my feet. What did they give me? No water for my feet. Uh -huh. But she had washed my feet with tears and wiped them with the hairs of her head. Right. Thou gavest me no kiss. But this woman, since the time I came in, have not ceased to kiss my feet. My head with oil, thou didst not anoint, but this woman have anointed my feet with ointment. Right. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins which are many are forgiven, for she loved much, but to whom little is forgiven, same love is good. So right here, if you can't forgive nobody, your giving is always going to be little. Because when you put it into your vocabulary, I never forgive that. Ninja yeah, for what he did. When you he say I will you. never, the script say you can bind sins on earth and you can bind them in heaven. What you bind on earth, you're saying, I don't want to let loose of this one. I'm not going to give forgiveness for this one. How about Christ show up and look through the window? Hey! It's on the side two o'clock in the morning. And you get up looking a certain way. <laughs> from doing a certain act. 
I'm not going to forgive you for that one. See you later. <laughs> Just this one. Verse 48. Uh -huh. And he said unto her, thy sins are forgiven. See what he said to her? He said, your sins are forgiven. This is true. Why you do you understand? Y'all, this is what we say. Christ went to that thing with the whole motive of it's going to be some sick here. That's looking for the healing mess. And that's what I'm here for. And I'm here for that only. When he invited me, I knew what he was up to. But this was an opportunity right here because the last time I was over here, when he came down here in June to the family union, he was asking me some things about the script. They were there trying to change his mind. If this opportunity allows me and the house gives me the house rules like Christ asked him, let me ask you a question. They say, say on, Israelite, at our feast. And you go to break them down and you explain this and that. This brother right here. Y'all told him this and didn't show him that. I tried to show him this and y'all said I was the devil. Mm. Why would y'all do that? What I'm saying is in the Bible. Did y'all show him out of the Bible? And once you would get into it like that, then they look at their situation and say, okay, yeah, no, I was wrong for that. Mm. I just didn't want him listening to him. Mm. So I threw a stumbling block at him. Once I said, you get an opportunity to straighten it out, but if you understand what Christ did first, he said, I got a question for you. Say on, Master. It's this man's house. Christ ain't going to teach you to go in nobody else kicking over stuff and take over. If you do, then you live there. They don't. You can go in the garage. What you got, brother? I want to give an example of it. I went for a job that uh -huh. was for a different parcel years ago. Right. I put down information that, that I thought would be perfect. Uh -huh. I was not too long out of school. I was too long graduate from high school, but I was in college. But anyhow, they told me I was overqualified mm -hmm. for the job. Right. I said, how the hell can I be overqualified? I need a job. Well, if I got qualifications, why wouldn't you have it? Right. Well, what you're saying is stumbling blocks were thrown in to keep me from getting the job. At all and, and with that, we have to make sure that we understand there's another door that's going to open. Absolutely. Don't back. give up. So we can't be discouraged by the things these people do. Right, and then you will find out later on why that, why you you end up with this job over here because this is gonna manifest itself. They closed down uh, right. uh, last weekend, right. right? You know, so you've been caught right back in the same cycle again. That's the way the most I want. But he wants you to see it through. They closed one door and say I opened another one, but that's faith, y'all, mm -hmm. not blind faith. Faith that the Most High got your back. Let's read the last list, y'all, so we close out. Go ahead. Verse 49. Uh -huh. And they that sat at meat with him began to say within themselves, Who is this that forgiveth sins? Oh, see, they at meat start to run out of this. Who was this then? I read about that before. They'll be saying about you too. Who was this here sitting bringing on Big Mom? <laughs> Church held. 600 hats. Last verse, verse 50. He said to the woman, Thy faith has saved thee. Go in peace. Thy faith has saved thee. Go in peace. Messiah is at this party. I'm going for that. That's what I'm disposed to go for. All right. Let's get this last verse, Corinthians 5, the last two verses that the psalm be out. First Corinthians 5, last two. And y'all, this is if you decide to give a feast. Y'all, just because they crown on their feast, you can't give yourself no bad feast. You can't invite nobody and you know it's going to be drama and you got your Israelite brothers coming over there. <laughs> man, you're the only going to be tripping, man. Because he's part of that voodoo doctrine, man. He made white on the chicken and fish and blood. So I'm going to try to stop. Stop. Boy, you can't do that. Let's get some more. Where we at? First Corinthians chapter 5, verse 11. Are we looking at everybody there? First, let's go to verse 9. Verse 9. First Corinthians 5, verse 9. Uh -huh. I wrote unto you in an epistle not to company with fornicators, yet not altogether with the fornicators of this world. See, he's saying not even, I told you to stay away from them first off. But not only of this world, you know, he, he's going to go into another world. We're talking about all late feast day. Let's get some more of this battle. Or with the covetous, or extortioners, or with idolaters. For then must ye needs go out of the world. 
But now I have written unto you not to keep company. If any man that is called a brother, a called a who? A brother. What is he called? A brother. Mm. Who's our brother? Mm. Those who do the Lord. Who is my father? If he, if he be called a brother. If any man that is called a brother be a fornicator, be a what? A fornicator, okay. or a covetous, right. or an idolater, right. or a reveler, right. or a drunkard, mm. or an extortioner, with such a one, no, not to eat. So the most high say, look, you, you think because you ain't gonna for Christmas and then you over here and your brother? Talking about his last night escapades? <laughs> Your brother cussing every other second? GB man, this scripture man, I laid into that SOV with I hit with some MF Psalms and I <laughs> MF Psalms. <laughs> 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 MF Psalms. And you you just better like this, right? Right, right. Pass with some chicken on bro. Right, right. No! You can't have even if he's your brother, he out of control. <laughs> Get some more of that. Verse 12. Uh, For what have I to do to judge them also that are without? Do not ye judge them that are within? So if you judge what's inside your house, and that basically saying the same thing, judge what's inside your body before you judge anything outside. If, if our house is unclean, how dare we go to somebody else's feast and try to tell them how to do it? Our feast is totally out of order. Our feast is out of order. So what happened when we tell them, look, this wrong, come on the aisle? And they say, you know what? I didn't have that. What you got over that land against that tree with that peace thing in the front of his pants. We didn't have it. <laughs> I didn't have the shaking that's going on over in them bushes that y'all got going on over there and there was clothes on top of those bushes. We didn't have that at our peace thing. So you want me to leave from this and come to this? No, Paul said when it's feasting, make sure the feasting is clean because once you tell them to let that go, you have to show them what feasting is about. Right, right. Show you up. Right, and the main thing is get inside, y'all. But we gonna hold that. You got one more Verse thirteen. Uh -huh. But them that are without God, judges, uh -huh. therefore put away from among yourselves. That wicked person. Look, God gonna judge them whether you go back over the old big mama house or not. God got that. What you gotta focus on is what's going on inside your house. And what's going on with our feast day. Is everybody eating unworthy? Huh? Before we invite somebody else to our and they see our dirty laundry. That's real talk. Well, according to 1 Kings 8 chapter, Daniel chapter 6 verse 10, Matthew 5, Christ tells us when we pray, we are to pray for Jerusalem because the law of God comes from Jerusalem, not to no stone, not to no idol, but to where the truth of God will come, where Christ will come and set up his kingdom. We are to look that way because that's where our help comes from. We happen to be in the West, so Jerusalem is east to us. We turn toward east. If we was in Russia, we turn toward the south. So y'all, it ain't about just point to the east, it's about where we are in our captivity according to 1 Kings 8. Wherever we turn away, look toward Jerusalem. Let's get it. Psalm chapter 61. With the most high permission, the name of his only begotten son. A psalm of David. Hear my cry, O God. Attend unto my prayer. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For thou hast been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. Mm. I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. I will trust in the covert of thy wings. Say lie. For thou, O God, has heard my vows. Thou hast given me the heritage of those that fear thy name. Thou will prolong the king's life, and his years is many generations. He shall abide before God forever. O prepare mercy and truth which may preserve him. So will I sing praise unto thy name forever, that I may daily, that I may daily 
perform my vows. Hallelujah! Say it loud! It says, Young.